Hey everybody, it's Jamie and we're continuing on with the beginner 2D pro, uh, game programming in JavaScript. This is again the uh, kind of the ported version of Code and More's uh, tutorial series. So in the last video we got to uh, create a rectangle on the screen and we even started moving it across the screen at 20 pixels per second. So um, what we're going to do now, we're going to kind of get rid of all of this code right here, the temporary stuff with the uh, X's and the Y, and we're going to remove some stuff out of the tick. So what I want to focus on now is getting a picture or an image to uh, be displayed on the screen. So to do that, we are still going to be able to use the uh, graphics brush that we're using or the graphics tool that we're using for the fill rect um, but we're going to be able to draw an image now there is some stuff that we have to do before we can draw an image we obviously have to actually load the image up so that we can then draw it to the screen um, so I'm going to create a a, a class or we're, we're going to create a class uh, in a new package so let's get started first by creating a new package or a new directory and we're gonna call it GFX just like code and more and that's going to stand for graphics inside of graphics now we're going to create a class which is a JavaScript file it's going to be called image loader just like this I'm going to have a capital L as well as a capital I and we're just going to create that so what we what we're going to do in here is obviously define the module the same as we do with all of our modules and we're going to include uh, we actually don't need anything to be required for this we're just gonna go straight to a function so we're not actually defining this the same as we do with our other classes because this is only going to contain uh, a static uh, a static function so we're essentially not going to create instances of this class we're more or less just going to be using fun a function in the class now this could change in the future I'm not sure um, I think for now though this will be fine so first thing we're going to do is create the image loader and set it equal to a blank object so to do a blank object it's just open close brackets we're just letting uh, JavaScript know or the browser know um, that this is an object now we're going to create a method of this or a, a function in this um, object and it's going to take the path of a image so within this we're first going to define um, our image object it's going to be equal to a new image and then we will set the source of this image to the path that we passed in so just keeping uh, some continuity here I'm gonna change path to underscore path now we don't need to there is no con uh, conflicting um, variable names but as I said before I like to put an underscore when we're passing in variables just kind of it's just a uh, consistency sake so with this now we can return our image and uh, this basically is the function oh and I forgot one thing that's very important it's image loader dot load image okay now this function will be called and passed the path to the image and it will return something that we can actually uh, draw with the graphics uh, tool so now I will return our image loader and uh, the next thing we have to do is go back into our apps.js and add our image loader so D G I image loader and it is in app slash classes slash uh, GFX slash image loader like so and I did spell it like that and one thing I did do I don't I didn't uh, notice it before but I did have a comma here and I'm not sure why that didn't cause a conflict or an error it should have but if you have the comma at the end of this um, it's unnecessary and actually should be problematic because um, it's the last um, it's the last one in the list so it doesn't need a comma 
So this is ref referring to our image loader. And now in our game, we can actually do uh, some drawing to the screen, I'm fairly certain. Um, now, Coden Moore, he, he creates a graphic of his own. I am going to, because of the fact that we're using JavaScript, um, I'm actually just going to go to uh, the internet real quick and we can find our own picture just to load in. So if I go to Google and now we, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you this and then what we'll actually do is save um, the image. So first we're just going to test it, make sure before I even do any saving. So let's just type in a game sprite. All right, and let's let's load in this little guy right here. So you can pick any picture off the web. You just need to have the full URL to it. So we're just going to use this, and then once we've got it loaded, and I see that it's working, um, I'm actually going to save it, and we'll create a resource uh, in textures folder just like Code and More did. So I will say G dot uh, draw image so let me double check this all right g dot draw image and we are going to see if we can get away with just passing in uh, that image that we create so um, I'm going to come up to initialize real quick and actually we'll come above here. I'm going to say var img is equal to uh, image loader dot load image and we will put this path that we got. Now one thing that's important if we want to have access to this we actually need to include it. So we will include image loader and set it to image loader so now we have access to image loader and in the render we should be able to pass in the image and let's just put some coordinates up I don't know if we need everything else um, at this point I haven't double checked if we need any other information other than the uh, coordinate so, oops. One thing that I do um, need to mention is uh, if we come over to this little gear here in the console and we click disable cache, whenever the console is up, it's actually not going to cache any of the files and it should start from scratch. So, as we can see here, we have as much of the image as we could get on there uh, displayed to the screen. So, I'm going to move this out of the way so we are at I think we are 600 by 300 right now so that's why we are only seeing part of the image um, now this does take a few other things that um, uh, a few other things that we we can do to the image such as scale it and all that but for right now uh, this should be plenty we have an image on the screen and our image loader class works perfect so that is really awesome. Um, now, I mean, I don't really feel like we need to do much else as far as scaling or anything like that. Uh, we will, we will um, be doing that in a function that I create uh, in probably just a few minutes. Actually, I'll, I might be doing it right now. So let me, let me kind of uh, work on taking what we've just learned here with the with the image loading and uh, let's load a sprite sheet like Codenmore does so I'm gonna erase the g.draw image here and I will erase our image and I'm gonna save a sprite sheet so we'll go back 
oops, go back here. And we'll grab a sprite sheet. You can use any sprites that you have made or, or anything like that. I'm just using one that already exists because, well, I'm lazy. So we'll just grab Mario. Or is this? Yeah, it's Mario. So I'm going to save this picture. We're going to go to our JS or our tile game. And we're going to create a new folder uh, right in the root, and it's going to be called resources or rests for resources. And then we'll create another one and we'll call it textures. And we will just say Mario.png. So now we have that, and it should show up here. And there's our Mario texture. Um, now we need to do some stuff to be able to actually pick which part of the image that we're going to draw. So uh, I am going to create a new library for loading in assets. So we're going to go into our graphics package and uh, create the assets class. So it's going to be a new JavaScript file, and it's going to be called Assets. And we will define this. Define, and this is going to take uh, a few things. So we're going to take Class. We're going to take Image Loader. We're going to need that. And um, we will uh, create... A, another class too so and it's going to be sprite sheet so I may actually have to create that first so I'll say class image loader and sprite sheet so we're going to have to create that sprite sheet class as well so I'm just gonna save what we have here and create a new uh, a new class within the graphics package and it's going to be oops not a style sheet it's going to be a JavaScript file as well and this one is going to be called sprite sheet and the sprite sheet is essentially just going to uh, allow us to pass in the sprite sheet or the path or the uh, the image sorry and then um, from there, we will uh, be able to pick a specific spot of the image that we want to uh, to use. So first thing, we will define the class and import our base class um, library. Then pass in that class so we can refer to it. And then we're going to create a, a uh, oops, we don't need this variable here. We're going to create the sprite sheet class, and it's going to extend our base class. And we'll have our uh, constructor here. We're going to pass in a sheet. And we'll set this dot sheet equal to sheet so we can refer to it specifically. All right, and then that's all we're going to have in the constructor here. The other thing that we will do is create a function. So sprite sheet dot prototype. We're going to prototype this function and it's going to be called crop. And it's going to take an X, a Y, a width, X, Y, width, and height. So this will let us um, specify 
which section we're going to crop. So we're going to start at a x and a y, and we are going to, oops, and this is supposed to be a function, and then we're going to grab everything within the uh, box that's generated with the width and height from there. So what we're actually going to return is an object that we can later um, read from. So we're going to set some properties. So sheet will be set to this.sheet. Uh, X will be set to underscore X. Y will be set to underscore Y. And the same thing with width and height. So what we're essentially doing is just returning an object that's going to have all the appropriate attributes um, labeled correctly. So from here, this is actually everything we need to uh, for the sprite sheet class. So we're just going to return sprite sheet. So oops, so we have access to um, the sprite sheet class. So return sprite sheet save that we're going to go to our app.js and let's add sprite sheet app slash classes slash gfx slash sprite sheet and we'll preemptively uh, add our assets app slash classes slash gfx slash assets all right so now we're gonna have access to those as well so um, code and more has in Java um, some functionality that we don't necessarily automatically have and that's why I've created the uh, crop function um, ourselves and we're going to use this um, in conjunction with a special prototype that we're adding to our tool brush and uh, I'll show you what I mean so we're going to jump over to our assets or not our assets but our display and because we have graphics here um, we could do this somewhere else but because we have the graphics uh, in the display I'm going to actually just put this in the display class and uh, we'll come down to the very bottom here above the return display and I want to add this so it's gonna be canvas rendering context 2d dot prototype dot my draw image so what this uh, what this is going to do is this is going to allow us um, to pass in an asset and it's going to have everything we need so like the X and the Y and all those kind of things um, will be auto automatically ready to be passed into the draw image function that we had created earlier so I will say we'll pass in an asset and this is going to have the uh, the information um, in the way that code or more kind of presented it so it's really easy just to crop with an X and a Y and a width and a height now that's not exactly how the my draw or the regular draw image works um, and I will explain it as I go to it so we're going to pass in an asset and we're going to pass in an X a Y a width and a height here so uh, the the context rendering, um, canvas rendering context 2D prototype draw my draw image. What we're basically doing is is we're tapping into the uh, canvas rendering context 2D, which we grab here for our graphics brush. We're tapping into it and we're adding our own function um, so that we can uh, essentially just call my draw image. Uh, g dot my draw image instead of the regular just draw image and this will allow us to pass in some um, some information such as like 
the uh, an asset object which has you know information about the the image um, such as the sheet and and things like that um, which we will have information already set so like which part of the sheet that we're going to be drawing like a crop image or whatever um, and that is something that that isn't native with JavaScript so we're creating our own function that will allow us to accept the correct parameters so one thing about the regular draw image is it takes an image object which we've created um, and it also takes a position an X and a Y position on the image that we want to draw so basically which part of the image we're going to start drawing f and the width so it's kind of like a slice I would say or um, uh, a, a cropping uh, you know ability so that's what this is it's where we're going to start cropping from and then the width of the crop section and the height of the crop section so that's what these first um, these first four of uh, aside from image here are for then the next thing is our position and then the width and height of the section that we're we're um, drawing so this is actually the scale of it um, we can actually set the width and height and stretch or skew or um, manipulate the image to to our size that we want even though you know the original size may be um, smaller or larger we get to scale it kind of with the width and height here so that being said down in our code we're going to say this dot draw image and it's going to be asset dot sheet so we're going to get the sheet which will be the image object um, once we create our assets uh, uh, or um, asset class and then it's also going to have a few other things that will um, be part of the asset so it will be the X position the Y position and just like we said these right here or where on the image we're going to start um, kind of cropping and then we will have the width and the height now the other thing that that we'll be able to do is in the my draw here we have we're passing in coordinates on the canvas through the X Y width and height so th this right here is all specific to what picture or what part of the picture we're drawing the next thing is going to be able to take that picture that or that cropped image and place it and size it wherever we want so we're going to pass in X Y width and height so once I create the assets class um, you'll be able to see more or less why um, what we're passing in here um, and that's going to be um, based on that object that we are creating in the sprite sheet right here so that's what this sheet is here um, and we're returning this and we're considering this the sheet uh, that we're passing in so this will this whole thing itself is an asset um, so this whole object is considered an asset that has information that we need so what image are we what image are we going to um, be cropping and then where we start cropping the width and the height of our crop section um, that should make sense uh, especially once we get the assets uh, class going so I will save this make sure that our display is saved and this is actually because it's part of the canvas context 2d when we create our canvas brush that is a function that we can access right from our uh, right from G right here so it'll actually be something that we can say instead of just the regular draw image um, at this point we could uh, we could create an object and pass it in without the assets um, without the assets class we could do it and get it uh, a part of the image but uh, I'd like to just so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some um, private variables so and actually they're going to end up being uh, static as well but for now we're going to um, have defined the uh, private version so default width 
I'm going to set that equal to 32. And default height is going to be equal to 32. And so we're going to have our defaults set. And that way we can refer to our <clears throat> just the default if we need to. Oops. And the next thing I will have is assets. So this will be all of our assets. Sheet. Um, we may not we may not need to uh, have the sheets actually we won't use sheet um, we'll create our assets declare the declaration or the constructor here class dot extend and we'll have our constructor and we will pass in a name path width and height So mine is a bit different than Code and Morse because uh, I'm actually going to have the assets um, be something that we can load in from another class. Uh, he kind of has all of the assets being loaded here. Uh, I kind of want to have the ability to load an asset um, so uh, in a way that in the future I can actually load them from a file and have them um, being loaded specifically in whatever class needs to uh, use maybe one asset so like tiles will be one asset with one image and then the uh, player will be one asset um, you know with its images there and the same thing with you know any other resources enemies and such so uh, inside of here we'll say assets and then we're going to create um, within this object we're going to create a a new uh, object uh, and set, set it equal to this instance. So we'll be able to refer to this specific thing by the name that we pass in. Um, so if we want to get, if we're in another class and we want to have access to like the player asset, we can actually just go in um, and get that from the global list of assets or object with all the assets in it. And you'll see how that works potentially in the future. So we're also going to set this dot name equal to underscore name. This dot path is equal to underscore path. This dot width. And so on this dot height is equal to height. And this dot sheet. We're going to set that equal to a new sprite sheet. And we're going to pass in image loader dot load image and this dot path so we're going to we're going to pass in um, the uh, the oops image load image here we go pass in the path that we put in for the asset so so now we have a new sprite sheet that we can pass into the um, the uh, my draw image function. So from here, let's set some static uh, variables that we can use uh, when, whenever we have access to our assets class. So we want to be able to get the default width. Oops, default width. And we we'll set that equal to default width and default height it's equal to default height. So within the class, we'll be able to um, within here, if we ever want to, we can have reference to default width and default height. We can set it one time up here, and it will become available uh, down here as uh, static variables that we can reference. Um, outside of the class. So default height uh, there. And the other thing that I want to create is a static function called get assets. And this will allow us to um, 
Oops. This will allow us to grab a specific a um, asset based on the name. So when we create like the player asset, we'll pass in maybe player um, as the name. So then when we want to, let's say for some reason we want to create an, a, an, an enemy, but the enemy just so happens to look exactly like our player, we can actually just grab the asset from the player and you will have access to all of the information for him as well. So all we're going to do then is return asset with our assets um, and uh, the asset at the um, name. So uh, within so so essentially we'll have like tiles. So it'll say asset, and then if we wanted to just say tiles, um, we that would be the name. We could refer to it by getting uh, get assets and then uh, a string uh, named tiles or, or or pass in tiles as the the uh, um, parameter that we want to to pass in and um, the property tiles. I I hope it makes sense for you guys. I mean essentially we'll just have it'll end up looking like you know inside of here it would be tiles and that'll be equal to you know some uh, basically all this stuff you'll have in the name you know the path all that and it'll be all in here ready for us to use um, and we can use it wherever we want and this also means that the way that we've set this up we can load assets in um, pretty easily from external files as well because eventually I want to be able to um, create animations and, and assets and all that from a JSON file that we can access um, without changing any of our code we can just go in um, create new assets from uh, JSON files and um, automatically load more in based on you know how many JSON files we have or, or different things like that so it's going to be really really uh really really cool once we get to that point so finally here where we turn assets so now we have access to assets anywhere we load that in and the cool thing is is because assets has does image loader and sprite sheet they're going to automatically be loaded in and ready to use um for anything else as well return assets why are we looking like all squiggly and stuff return assets why are you return outside of function oh my goodness we had some big that's a silly error of mine that goes here and we can remove this there we go. So these do not belong inside of our class extends uh, object that we pass in. So these are all things that we uh, we can use when we have access to the assets class. So if we go back to uh, game and we go and get rid of image loader and we say assets here and assets there now we should be able to create an asset and I will temporarily throw an asset up here so we'll say var uh, ast is equal to a new assets and like we said before that's going to take a name so we'll just say um, test is the name it's going to take a path so this is going to be a path to um, to the uh, image. So let's just grab, uh, what, where was that? I think I remember we had it in res slash textures slash mario.png and then it will take a width so we'll say 32 by 32 now we could instead of saying 32 by 32 we could say asset slash 
default width and assets.default height. Now, one thing cool about the IDE that we're using um, is that it actually can grab, it goes in there and grabs those variables and stuff for me. So I actually get some code hints, which is nice, something that you don't get default with uh, Notepad. So now that we have an asset, we should be able to um, do some things with the asset specifically for uh, uh, like a specific part of it using that crop function and things like that. So I will go to one such file and now that we have the asset we can do something like uh, uh, our image is going to be equal to asset or sorry AST dot sheet dot crop and we should be able to crop we'll say 0 0 and 32 by 32 now I don't know if this is going to be a good part of the image or not but essentially what this is going to do is we're going to start at the top left and we're going to crop a 32 by 32 piece of that and that will be our image because um, if we come to our uh, assets here now we're still showing some error um, right here there we go. We don't need a semicolon there. Um, if we go to our sheet, because that's what we, we have, if we go to our sheet, which is here, this is what's uh, considered our sheet. And we have this crop function there, which returns uh, which returns in a, a sheet object that we can actually use in that my draw image. So if we go back to our game we've cropped this and we're setting it to image and now we can uh, come to the render we should be able to say g dot my draw image and then we can put in the asset which is ast and then where we want it to be placed so we'll say 10 and 15 so 10 over 15 down and we want it to be we'll just keep it 32 by 32 so now that we've got uh, that going on um, in the render let me explain uh, this again so we we've created an asset and we've given it a name so that we can refer to it anywhere we've given it a path uh, to the image that we're going to use and we've set the size that we want these um, these to be drawn at. So, so our asset is going to be 32 by 32 pixels. Uh, so that's the size of it. Now what we want to do is now that we've got our asset, we're going to we'll be able to have different pieces of it based on where we crop. So we have our asset. And, and it's just the whole image and now right here we can use we can take the sheet from the asset and uh, crop that and get a specific part of it um, for you know just depending on what we're doing you know maybe different tiles or, or things like that we will have different crop sections so we're cropping this 0 0 and then 32 is the size of the crop piece so we should get top left in a chunk that's 32 pixels by 32 pixels and we will then draw that to the screen here so let me see what kind of errors we have now um, I do want to make sure that we have everything we needed here assets 
All right, let me let's just see what we've got. So, uh, draw image, display line 55. All right, so it looks like right here I passed in the asset. And really what we want to pass in is our cropped section that we're going to draw. So that will have everything that we need in it. So let's see what, what we've got going on now. And there we are. We have part of that whole sheet being displayed. So we can see that he must be obviously a little larger than 32 by 32. Um, we can easily now go into our code here in the crop and let's give him 40 tall. So now when we run it, we've got a little bit more. He might be a little bit taller yet. We'll say 45. We might end up getting part of the next, uh, the next guy. Nope. So it looks like this piece right here, if we look at our image, so if we go to our image, which I will load up now, let me grab that. It is in the rest, the resource folder, textures, and so if we look here, it looks like we are squishing it a bit because the uh, image is actually not a perfect square. So that comes from the fact that we put 32 and 32 here. So if we made this taller instead of the default height 32 by 32, um, I believe that we would have a much less quaddy version of the picture. So I just so happened to pick a picture that was not perfectly square. Um, I suggest if we do load an image in, we end up picking an image that's square just so that, uh, you know, there's no skewing or anything like that. But as you can see, we've loaded that picture in and it's just a piece of the image. Um, it's not the whole image itself. So uh, this is a really long tutorial. We've did so many things. Um, but really, what, we, what we've did is we've just allowed ourselves the ability to easily pick out parts of an image and um, reuse the image very easily. So like right here, if we wanted to say var image2, we can just set it equal to the asset, sheet.crop, and then we could crop a different part, 32 over, 0, 32 by 45 or 45. So now we have easily been able to reuse that asset. We can come to our draw function and we can redraw this, let's say 30 pixels over and we'll do draw image two. And now we have two little guys. Now they're obviously over a little weird. We could push him even further over and uh, our crop might be a little off as well but that'll come just uh, with tweaking some numbers and such. So we're actually getting a little bit of the bottom and the right guy. So those are called artifacts and we can trim those artifacts out. Um, but yeah, I mean we're getting the general concept in the next video I will, um, I will definitely do some tweaking. You know, get a a, a nice image, and um, we'll proceed on with uh, possibly um, creating some game states and uh, a few other things like that. So uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, hopefully, it won't be this long, um, and I hope you guys kept up with this one. All right, bye.